Well, thank you, Josh. Happy Sabbath, everyone. And happy Sabbath to those online. Hopefully they found us. Uh, our local church website went down, and it's going to be down for who knows. So, uh, but the live stream can come through the main website from Gretna, the cogme.org. So just get that out there for those who are online and can pass that along to people. I know there's a few on back in Jackson watching, but just an uh, update on that so we don't know when that will end. And Gretna has promised that during their service today that they'll make the announcement that we're still live streaming just on one website, not our local one. So, again, happy Sabbath. And it's great to be back. It's been two months exactly since we've been here. So it's great to be with a bunch of wonderful people like yourself and be back in Syracuse and a lovely drive down. Had to get used, had to get used again to that two-hour drive. It's, but it's a, it's a beautiful drive down. As Josh mentioned, we like to do the uh, prayer list now and the announcements. And then after that, we'll have Josh come back up and do the middle hymn. So here we have our uh, prayer list first. Uh, again, thank you to Kathy Zemitis for getting this out to us. And on our prayer list, we have, as you know, um, Sharon passed away this past Monday. Um, Sharon Miller, for those online, Sharon Miller. Uh, Sharon had another stroke on the 18th, and they rushed her to the hospital. But unfortunately, she passed away. Please pray for her family as they mourn the loss of Sharon. She will be greatly missed by the church brethren as well, and that is true. I had to keep telling myself, though, she's locked, she's locked in. She's locked in. She'll be there when Christ returns. She has, she's resting. She's waiting for that trumpet call, and I had to keep telling myself this week. She's locked in, and we will see her again. And so that's, that's the awesome promise of the salvation plan of God. And so, uh, but please keep her family in your prayers and as they mourn her loss. But again, we will see her again. And that's the promise of God that we will. Thank you for your prayers in regards to the Sandy Council. The report from the CT scan for her kidney stones came back negative. And, uh, we knew God was in control when that day she was in pain and we prayed for her. Within the, several hours, the pain was gone and God had answered our prayers. So thank you, though, for your prayers in regards to the Sandy Council. We appreciate that and we thank you for that. Mark Wine, he is 77 years old and in Pennsylvania and in the hospital. For 31 days, he was suffering with the coronavirus. The virus has cleared now, but he now has pneumonia, and doctors believe it may be because he was on a ventilator. Please pray for God's intervention on behalf of Mark Wine. And we have an update on Eric Letty. This is from Rick Belts. This is updated uh, the 19th. It says, doesn't look too good for Eric. Barring, barring a miracle from God, he may not be with us much longer. He is only 32 years old. In addition, the family recently lost a grandfather and a young nephew of Jeff and Sharon. And so please keep Eric Letty. We also have an update from the Church of God Cincinnati in regards to Eric. It says Eric is in a great deal of pain, has his tumor on his shoulders larger than a volleyball now. His mom Sharon was updating me last night and this morning that he is having a really rough week and is declining. There are cysts and small growths developing all over and he has lost a ton of weight. And she says it would be, uh, excuse me, she said she would love if friends would be willing to pray and fast for him. Please keep Eric and his family in your prayers. And so that update came from the Church of God Cincinnati. So um, please continue to pray for Eric and petition our Father in Heaven to be with him and his family. Um, that is all I have on the prayer list. But I did want to share, Tammy came to me here just before services and once again, reiterate, praise God, and thank you for your prayers in regards to her daughter, Amy. God is just performing miracle after miracle with Amy, and this past week, she went to work for about three hours, and so she's getting up and about and working, so praise God for that, and again, thank you for your prayers in regards to Amy Pavel. God has heard our prayers with that, and he has answered, so 
We'll praise him and give him all the glory that he is due. Anything else that we need to update real quick? Well, at this time, like we like to do, we like to uh, pray. If you would, please, uh, let us pray and ask God's intervention on behalf of our new and updated prayer um, list. Almighty Father in heaven, great God of this universe, we once again come before your throne of mercy and grace, and we thank you so much for everything that you do for us. You watch over us. You keep us safe. You keep us healthy. You are with your people, and we praise your holy name. Father, we come now before you this, on this Sabbath to come and ask that you would intervene and be with those who are new and updated on our prayer list. Continue to be with them and guide them. We ask that you'd be with the family of Sharon Miller. It is sad to see that we, Sharon has passed away, but it, we should rejoice in the fact that we will see her again. And she is locked in, and she will be there in the resurrection. And we just thank you for that truth and that wonderful plan of salvation to understand that. It is sad not to see her, but we do ask for your comfort with her family, with us too that you would be with us and comfort us, comfort us and just keep reminding us of your great plan of salvation. So we thank you for that, Father. We ask that you would be with Mark Wine. We thank you and praise your name that he's off the ventilator, that we've been praying for him, and he was on that ventilator. But now he's contracted pneumonia, and we ask once again, Father, that you would be with Mark, be with him, guide him, and help him through this health issue. Heal him of his pneumonia and just be with him as he has to face this. We thank you so much for being with Mark. We ask that you would be with Eric. Let he continue to be with him. We've been praying, him, praying for him for a, a long time now. And his tumor is growing. And he's in a lot of pain and he's suffering. And we ask, Father, that you would intervene and be with Eric. Be with his wife. Be with his family that your healing hand would be upon him and guide him, and that you would just let him know that you're there for him. So, Father, we ask that, and we pray that, and we just thank you, Father, for answering this prayer in regards to Eric. We thank you, Father, for the answered prayers in regard to Sandy Council. We thank you for that. Whatever she went through, that pain she went through on that day, it's gone. And it's a negative result for the CT scan, which is awesome, and we thank you for that. So th again, we just praise your name for an answered prayer in that. And we thank you and praise your name for answered prayer in regards to Amy Pavel. She was able to get up this past week and go into work for three hours. And where she was at the beginning of all this, you have brought her very far. And we thank you for that, Father. We thank you so much for being with Amy and being with her mom, Tammy, and being with her family and just supporting them and helping them through this and just, again, getting Amy to this point. And we just ask that you would continue to work with her and help her continue to grow and be stronger each day. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come before you and praise your name. We know there are others on the prayer list, and just as you are, we, we strive not to be respecter of persons. And in our daily prayers, as we come before you, we ask that you would help us remember those on the prayer list to come before you and ask for your help and your intervention on their behalf. We know through the great promise that you have, your son, what he went through, the stripes laid upon him, we can ask for healing. So, Father, we thank you, we praise you, and we give you all the glory. And we ask these things in the name of your son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, we have some announcements to go through. I'll bring those up real quick. Well, the big news, well, first off, we have potluck today after services. Please stay and enjoy the fellowship and the potluck today. Do we have a card? Over there, it's already out? It's being signed right now. So we'll have a card uh, for Don Grimes. He's uh, you know, our deacon up in the Eaton Rapids area, and I, don't, I know, I think Steve talked about it last week. We've been praying for Don, too. He's in uh, house, in-house hospice care, and... Uh, so just, we have a card, so if you get an opportunity, please sign that, and we'll send that out to Don um, this upcoming week. 
So we do have card. I don't know if that's the only card, more cards. I don't know, okay. We have at least one card. With that, that takes care of today. Next week announcement, big news, big news. If you didn't know, it's Pentecost weekend. As we come to the close of next week, next week will be the seven, seven weeks and the 50th day for Pentecost. Next weekend is Pentecost weekend here at the, in Syracuse. We will, the plan is, well, I got to bring that up too. So many things to bring up. If you're able to, the Essen House is a go for next, this upcoming next Friday night at 6.30 p.m. if you're able. Steve has contacted me and let me know. They'll be setting up tables of six. And so they'll just, unlike last year where it's long tables, there'll be tables, round tables of six, six feet apart around. They can do that. And the announcement, is, let's see, also for announcements, the cost is $19.95 per adult. $1.45 per year of age for children up to, would you say, up to 14? Up to 14. So like my daughter, my youngest is 10. 10 times 1 is 14.50. So she would cost 14.50. So $1.45 per year of age for child. Um, the plan is just to make a donation if you're able. That's okay if you can't. Cover that if you can make a donation. Even if you can't make a donation, you're more than welcome to come and enjoy the fellowship and the food of the Essen House. Um, if you have any questions, please contact Steve. Also, they need a final head count by Tuesday. By Tuesday, a final head count. Um, so you can contact Steve. Where's his number? Right there. 574-584-2001. 574-584-2001 is Steve's number. And if you, if you haven't reserved yet, we, I know we had a sign-up sheet in the back. It might still be back there. Um, let him know by Tuesday. Okay. So then on Sabbath, a week from today, Pentecost weekend, one o'clock services, we will have fellowship. The doors of the church will be open at noon, so you can come in and fellowship before services. And then services will begin at 1 p.m. Potluck and fellowship after services. And then uh, later on, a week from tonight will be the sing-along and karaoke. Not karaoke, sing-along, that is the same thing. Ice cream social, there we go. Ice cream, I think that starts at 7 o'clock that evening. A week from tonight, so that is next Sabbath. So, and then Pentecost Sunday, a week from tomorrow, services will begin at 12 o'clock noon. The building will be open at 11 a.m. for fellowship before. And then after Pentecost services, dinner and fellowship meal will be provided by the church. And just like last year, it was a chicken dinner and all the fixings from Penguin Point. So that's the plan for Pentecost weekend. And for those online, we do plan on live streaming both Sabbath services and Pentecost Sunday services next weekend. So that's the upcoming schedule for next week. Am I missing anything? What? Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Let me pull that up. Uh, oh, right there. Quality Inn and Suites in Goshen, Indiana, but I uh, think the block of, I don't know if the special pricing is, that, that ran out May 15th, I believe. So uh, we will be staying at the Quality Inn and Suites in Goshen, Indiana. The rates were $85 a night for a regular room and $110 for a suite. The phone number is 574-534-3133. 574-534-3133. But I do know that the special pricing, I think, was done May 15th. So you can call them and ask and see, but um, I believe that was the case. Thank you. Anything else I missed? Oh. If you are staying at the hotel, Karen did some investigating, um, or Sandy did, sorry. Give credit where credit is due. Um, don't think the pool will be open because of the restrictions, some of the, some of the restrictions still in place. The breakfast is grab and go breakfast. They'll still have breakfast for you in the morning at the hotel, but it's grab and go, like muffins and bagels and things like that. 
But there is a restaurant across the way, across from the hotel, if you're interested in that. I don't know the name of that restaurant. No? Okay. So, just to give you the updates, you know. Um, I, I didn't keep up to date with the Indiana restrictions being lifted. Uh, Michigan, we're st still kind of behind the times a little bit. So, but um, just let you, but Indiana has made strides to release some of the restrictions for COVID-19. And I, praise God for that. I'm going to say that. Praise God. Thank God for that. That um, we're able to come into the building and do these things and get ready for Pentecost weekend. So, with that... And then we have, make sure I say everything. I mentioned the, okay. So with that, we'll look at birthdays. Today is the 23rd, and we have a birthday today, Susie Mead. So happy birthday out there if Susie's watching. Susie Mead, happy birthday to you. And that's the only birthday this week. So happy birthday. No anniversaries this week, and with that, am I, I don't think I'm missing anything. If I am, contact me after um, services, and with that, I'll have Josh come back up and do the middle hymn, and then I'll be back up. Thank you, Chuck. One other thing to add, we will have a card, two cards on the back table for Don Grimes and for Sharon uh, for you to sign afterwards. So uh, remember, if you would, please sign those for them. If you'd grab your hymnals and rise, we'll sing another hymn. Another one we like to sing quite often. Hymn number 120. Hymn number 120. Hymn number 120. Be Thou My Vision. this time, we'll have Chuck come back up and he'll give us our main sermon message for today. So Chuck.
Again, thank you again, Josh. And happy Sabbath again to everybody. Again, I'm just uh, wonderful to be back here in Syracuse. You know, it's just how God has blessed us to be together. You guys came back last week here. We watched you, and it was wonderful to see. And again, this week, I'm just looking forward to a great Pentecost weekend next weekend. As I mentioned, it's been two months since our last visit here and due to COVID-19. And a lot's happened in two months, hasn't it? A lot's happened. The world is a mess. This country is in chaos. Patience is low. Frustration is high. And in the middle of it, in the middle of it all, here we sit. God's chosen people watching his called out ones, members of the body of Christ, paying attention to what's happening around us, praying, and striving to do what our God has asked us to do. Be strong in Him. Be strong in Him. And his prayer, our prayers are being answered. Last week was an answer to prayer. For this building being reopened, having Sabbath services again. God's hand is on his people. God is watching us, taking care of us, guiding us. And all he asks us to do is be strong in him. Nothing else. There's a lot under that umbrella. Don't get me wrong. To be strong in him. There's a lot there to do that we have to pay attention to and accomplish and get done. Through his eyes, he sees a people waiting. A people doing. A people reaching out to him and asking for strength and guidance. And that's what we'll need to continue to do as his people. See, when it comes down to that, we need to see things through God's eyes. We have a part of the Father in us. And again, not to give a you know, preview of Pentecost. We have a part of the Father in us. Each, every member, baptized member of the body of Christ, we have the Father in us. A little piece of his power, of his strength, of his wisdom. See, in God's eyes, there's no blue or red. There's not politics through God's eyes. There's not Republican or Democrat. There's not con conservatism or liberalism or progressive progressiveness. What there is, is his truth and the truth of the world, which is put there by our enemy, Satan the devil. That's what God sees through his eyes, his truth, and the things that are against his truth. That is where the line is drawn through God's eyes. He asks us to be strong in him and to trust him. And throughout the Bible, we can see the choice given that God has said to his people, will you trust me or will you not trust me? Will you believe in what I tell you or will you not believe what I tell you? Jeremiah 17 Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 5. We'll start in verse 5. Jeremiah 17, verse 5. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord, for he shall be like a shrub in the desert 
and shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land which is not inhabited. He point blank says, Cursed is the man that relies and trusts in man. I talked about kind of this a few weeks ago in Jackson. When we don't give God the glory, that's a problem. That's an issue. As I said, many things have happened the past two months. Well, actually longer than that since the arrival of COVID-19 on our shores. And when it first came out, November, December, over across the seas, What's the first thing they run to? Science. Science will get us through. And again, I said this a couple weeks in Jackson. I'm a science teacher. I love science. When it's used properly. Science defines that there's a God. Science tells us that there is a creator that created. There is a designer that designs. But just like anything else, if we rely on science itself to get us through, that's not relying on God. God has provided us, provided us with many people that he has blessed throughout the ages to understand science and understand God through science. Or the, or the thing is, trust me, I'm the, I'm the head of the government, whichever government. I'm, not, I'm playing politics here, but we've seen it, we've heard it. Whoever you want to pick in the government, trust me, and we will get you through. I haven't heard one word. I haven't. Maybe you have. Trust in God, and he will get this country through. I haven't heard in our state. I haven't. I just haven't. If you have, just trust in God, he says. go back to Jeremiah 17 and we pick it up in verse 7. He said, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters which spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear when heat comes, but its leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. will not fear. If we trust in the Lord, we shouldn't fear. I know it's hard. But human, I say this all the time. I've said this for many years since I've had the honor and the privilege and to be able to speak. Easier said than done. We're human. We still got to fight that human side of us. There's times we do fear. And there's times we are anxious. But we have to trust and hope in the Lord. Psalm 146. Psalm 146. And as you're turning there, that's part of overcoming, is overcoming those fears and overcoming that anxiety and trusting on the Lord and in the Lord and growing each and every day. Psalm 146, verse 1. Psalm 146, verse 1 says, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul, while I live, I will praise the Lord. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Do not put your trust in princes, nor in a son of man in whom there is no help. His spirit departs, he returns to his earth, and that very day his plans perish. Happy is he who has the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God. The Lord is God to keep going to keep moving forward Jeremiah 39 Jeremiah 39 verse 18 
For I will surely deliver you, and you shall not fall by the sword. But your life shall be as a prize to you, because you have put your trust in me, says the Lord. Says the Lord. Because you have put your trust in me. Psalm 125. Psalm 125, verses 1 and 2. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved but abides forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people from this time forth and forever. so many scriptures we could go to about trusting in God. And are we going to trust in Him or not trust in Him? Believe Him, not believe Him. See what He's done for us and then say, well, you're not going to take me any further? Or say, yeah, you've gotten me this far. What's next? Let's keep going. Let's go to 1 Samuel 8. One of several, several examples in his scripture in his holy word, where we can read what happens when people don't trust God. 1 Samuel chapter 8. First Samuel 8 verse 4, we'll start in verse 4. Then all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, Look, you are old, and your sons do not walk in your ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. But the the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge judge us. So Samuel prayed to the Lord, and the Lord said to Samuel, Heed the voice of the people in all that they say to you. For they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me. That I should not reign over them. And again, it's kind of hard to wrap our minds around that because that history that they had here, you know, saying you've got to put our, we've got to put ourselves in their shoes. Try to go back in time and here, and here's Samuel, the judge. And the Lord was you know, talking with Samuel, using Samuel to guide the nation of Israel. And they could look back at their history and see all the marvelous works that the Lord God had done for them. But of course, you know, it wasn't a perfect path out of Egypt. Throughout their history, there was forsaken, you know, the rejecting of the Lord throughout the way until we got to this point with Samuel. But the people finally got tired and wanted to reject even God's authority. They wanted a king like the rest of the world, like the rest of the nations surrounding them. They wanted to be like the world. Verse 8, according to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them up out of Egypt, even to this day, with which they have forsaken me and served other gods, so they are doing to you also. Now therefore hear their, heed their voice, however you shall soundly forewarn them and show them that the behavior of the king who will reign over them. So he's going to show them, you're going to reject me, there's consequences. You're not going to trust in me, there's consequences. In verse 10, Samuel tells them. So Samuel told all the words of the Lord to the people who asked him for a king. And he said, this will be the behavior of the king who will reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them for his own chariots. And to be his horsemen, and some will run before his chariots. 
He will appoint captains over his thousands and captains over his fifties, will set some to plow his ground and reap his harvest, and some to make his weapons of war and equipment for his chariots. He will take your daughters to be perfumers, cooks, and bakers. And he will take the best of your fields, your vineyards, and your olive groves and give them to his servants. He will take a tenth of your grain and your vintage and give it to his officers and servants. And he will take your male servants, your female servants, your finest young men, and your donkeys and put them to his work. It's almost like a form of slavery. They're going to be enslaved to this king. And things that they didn't have to do before under the rule of Almighty God, they were going to have to do consequences for their actions. And you will cry out in that day because of your king whom you have chosen for yourselves, and the Lord will not hear you in that day. Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel, and they said, No, but we will have a king over us, that we also may be like all the nations, and that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. Almost like the Lord didn't fight the battles for them, which we know is not true. And Samuel heard all the words of the people, and he repeated them in the hearing of the Lord. So the Lord said to Samuel, Heed their voice and make them a king. And Samuel said to the men of Israel, Every man go to his city. I bring that out just one of many examples of the choice that God gives. The Lord God gives. Trust in me. I take care of you. I've taken care of you. I mean, the nation of Israel... And it goes throughout history. We're all stubborn. We're all hard-headed. It's part of the human nature that fights inside of us. He sees when he looks down, does he see people obeying his word? Does he see through his eyes? Does he see the obedience to his word. Jeremiah 9. Let's go back to the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah 9, starting at verse 12. Who is the wise man who may understand this? And who is he to whom the mouth of the Lord has spoken that he may declare it? Why does the land perish and burn up like a wilderness, so that no one can pass through? And the Lord said, Because they have forsaken my law, which I set before them, and have not obeyed my voice nor walked according to it. But they have walked according to the dictates of their own hearts and after the bales which their fathers taught them. And we see history repeating itself throughout history in regards to this. His own people, the nation of Israel, didn't want him as a king. They didn't want him as a god. They followed the bales. And if you look up Baal, obviously we know it's a false god, obviously. But that they would sacrifice their children to Baal. Make them go through the fire and, and sacrifice to Baal. I read that and I see today how this nation sacrifices its children even before they're born. And it's lawful to do so. You can't go get your hair cut. You can't go get a shave or a trim. But sure enough, you can walk in and get an abortion. That's essential. The mindset of evil that we see that can permeate and goes through our country and the world and the things that we see. 
They don't make sense because they are chaos. It's the mindset of a false god, of the god of this world, Satan the devil, that still has hold. Sacrifice their children through fire to Baal. Jeremiah 19. Jeremiah 19, verse 3. Jeremiah 19, verse 3 says, And say, Hear the word of the Lord, O kings of Judah, inhabitants of Jerusalem. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. Behold, I will bring such a catastrophe on this place that whoever hears of it, his ears will tingle. Because they have forsaken me and made this an alien place, because they have burned incense to the other gods, whom neither they, their fathers, nor the kings of Judah have known, and have filled this place with the blood of the innocents. They have also built the high places of Baal to burn their sons with fire for burnt offerings to Baal, which I did not command or speak, nor did it come into my mind. I said this many times, and I will keep saying it. God has allowed Satan to do his job well, to deceive this nation, to deceive the world. And as Scripture says that, he deceives the whole world. And we have forgotten as a country, and make no mistake, this country is, are the descendants of Israel. That we, this country worships false gods. It allows things to happen that should not happen in the eyes of God, whether it's abortion or homosexuality, the destruction of the family. And we sit and we watch and we pray. We ask God to intervene. And we do pray, like our Savior said to pray, your kingdom come. We strive to obey his word, to be those lights unto the world. Wherever our light shines, we strive to obey. That's what God sees through his eyes. Who is obeying? Who is striving to keep the word of Almighty God? We are here today because we are keeping the word of God, the weekly Sabbath day. His ordained time every week to meet with his people. Jeremiah 11. Jeremiah 11. Will they obey? Will they obey? Jeremiah 11, verse 3. And say to them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Cursed is the man who does not obey the words of this covenant, which I commanded your fathers in the day I brought them out of the land of Egypt, from the iron furnace, saying, Obey my voice, and do according to all that I command you, so shall you be my people, and I will be your God that I may establish the oath which I have sworn to your fathers to give them a land flowing with milk and honey as it is this day. We strive to obey that voice, his voice, so we can see and make it to our land of milk and honey, the promised land. The kingdom of God on this earth Will you obey? He gives a choice every time. Choice. There's a choice. Let 
Leviticus 22. Leviticus 22, verse 31. Just one verse here, Leviticus 22, verse 31. He says, Therefore you shall keep my commandments and perform them. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. We can turn to John 14, something that we read the night of the Lord's Supper. John 14. John 14, verse 21. John 14, verse 21. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. And my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. Our enemy who is full of hate, our enemy who is full of chaos, has deceived the world to not understand this. He has, mis he has deceived the world to say, if you, if you, because I've talked to people about this and, and I've asked people, what does that say? Oh, that's not really what it means. I have, I've had people come to my doorstep and want to, you know, whether they be Seventh-day Adventist or, you know, Jehovah's Witness. Or, I've had people come to my door. They probably walked away and said, we'll never go to that place again. <laughs> and I've said to a couple of them, you have your Bible, what does your Bible say? Well, that's not what it really means. I've had that said to me. Oh, okay. Okay. Because Satan has deceived the world. And please remember, and I say this a lot too, it's a miracle that we understand. It's by God's almighty hand that he's touched your mind to understand these things. Touched our mind to be called out and to see the deceptions that surround us. We love him because we keep his commandments. We keep the commandments because we love him. Hand in hand. And the Father works with us through Jesus Christ because he wants to see his people obey. It is about obedience. Through God's eyes, does he see obedience? We see the world deceived and believing this doesn't hold true. We see the world think that it's not God the Father we should worship, it's Mother Nature we should worship. I went, going back to my science talk a little, you know, at the beginning of this. When you worship science and you misapply science, you're worshiping a false god. When you say we're treating Mother Nature wrong, and it's Mother Nature coming after the human beings with the COVID-19 virus, that is blasphemy to the highest. Of course, they don't understand. Again, Satan has deceived the world. Does he see the obedience of his words? Deuteronomy 5. Deuteronomy 5. Deuteronomy 5, verse 32. Deuteronomy 5, verse 32 says, Therefore you shall be careful to do as the Lord your God has commanded you. You shall not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. You shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God has commanded you, that you may live and that it may be well with you, 
and that you may prolong your days in the land which you shall possess. What a promise. Again, he's talking, again, we, I, in the context, he's talking to the nation of Israel. You know, coming out of Egypt, they're out in the wilderness. He's telling them, you, but listen to me. I'm giving you the choice to listen to me. It's the same message that we have today. Listen to me. And you'll make it to the kingdom. You'll get there. I will help you. Trust in me, he says. Walk in all the ways which the Lord your God has commanded you, that you may live. And that it may be well with you. That you may live. That's an awesome promise. It's great. It's wonderful. And times are tough. Let's just be honest. Things are happening. People are losing, you know, being laid off, have laid off. The economy stinks. <laughs> but God has promised that He will walk with us and be with us. And we're here for each other. That's what God says to do. We're here for each other, for our brothers and sisters. We're all in, the, you know, they do say this out in the world we're all in this together. Well, that should hold true for the body of Christ. We're in this together. Fighting an invisible foe with God and our King, with God the Father and His Son and our King Jesus Christ leading the way. Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Psalm 119, starting in verse 47. Psalm 19, starting in verse 47, says, And I will delight myself in your commandments, which I love. My hands also will I lift up to your commandments, which I love. And I will meditate on your statutes. Remember the word to your servant, upon which you have caused me to hope. This is my comfort in my affliction. For your word has given me life. His word has given us life. Physically and spiritually. Has given us life. Let's go back to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel 15. First Samuel 15. Does he see obey? Does he see obedience? First Samuel 15, verse 22. So Samuel said, has the, Lord, has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to heed than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. See, earlier we talked about being hard-headed and stubborn. It gets in the way. It gets in the way of God's word, stubbornness and hard-headedness. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he also has rejected you from being king. And these are words that were told to the first king of, of Israel, Saul. Because he wouldn't listen. He wouldn't obey the Lord. Because he was stubborn and hard-headed. Thought he could do it his way and get away with it. And he was rejected and t taken away from that throne. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15. Does God see through his eyes... Standing in the word, in the truth. Does he see? 
his people standing tall. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 58. First Corinthians 15, verse 58 says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. We're working hard. It's not in vain. He sees us. He knows we're doing our job. He, he sees it. He sees us standing tall. As Josh has gotten me hooked into looking at other versions of the Bible and the Holy Word. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 58 in the message. The message version. It says, with all this going for us, my dear, dear friends, stand your ground. And don't hold back. Throw yourselves into the work of the master, confident that nothing you do for him is a waste of time or effort. It's not a waste of time or effort what we do. We stand tall. Stand our ground. With everything going around us, the deceptions. And we're tempted, we're tested. Everything that we face, we each have a different walk with God on our, by our side and our Savior by our side. We each have a different walk. But he says, stand your ground. Philippians 4. Philippians 4, verse 1. He says, Therefore, my beloved and long live for brethren, my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, beloved. Paul is writing to the church in Philippi. Stand fast. Stand tall. Be strong. It says in the message version, chapter 4, verse 1, My dear, dear friends, I love you so much. I do want the very best for you. You make me feel such joy. Don't waver. Stay on track. Steady in God. Stay on track. Don't waver. Stand tall. Going to verse 4. Same, same chapter, Philippians 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. That great promise of being there for us. To take care of us, guide us. We saw at the beginning. Will you make the choice? He says, will you choose to trust in me? Will you choose to obey me? And I will take care of you. I will take care of you. He said that. We read those scriptures. And there's plenty more scriptures to go around that say those things. Verse 8, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, 
if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. It's continued growth. Not any one of us. And I talk to myself too when I, you know, we go through go through these scriptures and and I get, you know, read them the day before, the morning of the Sabbath, the day before. Are we concentrating on what things that we need to concentrate on? The things that are noble to continue to look and meditate on the things that are pure through God's eyes. Do we take the time to pray and ask, God, would you let us see, let me see what you see? See the things that I need to see to obey you. To stay on track and not to waver. Even with chaos surrounding us, and deception surrounding us. Father, keep me on track. 1 Corinthians 16. 1 Corinthians 16. First Corinthians 16, verse 13. 1 Corinthians 16, verse 13. Verse 13 says, Watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong. And it says, Let all that you do be done with love. The NIV says, be on your guard. Stand firm in the faith. Be courageous, be strong, do everything in love. If one other version, the message version says, keep your eyes open. Hold tight to your convictions. Give it all you've got. Be resolute. And love without stopping. As I made mention, you know, we look at some of these different versions. It's nice to have some different versions to look at and to see. Maybe a little bit more English than the old, you know, the old King James or whatever. Normally I read from the new King James. But it's nice to look at some of the other versions and to see and how they back each other up for the most part. You know. <laughs> but it's a conviction. We have to be resolute and stand our ground even when the world says, no, oh, that's not true. You're old. Old Testament's done away with. This is done away with. You can do that. What does it sound like? Sounds like the Garden of Eden. The whisper goes, you won't die. The whisperer said, go ahead. You can eat of that tree. You won't die. And what did God just tell them? I don't know how many moments before. Stand, st stand tall. Be resolute. Hold on to the convictions that we know and the truth that we know to be true. James chapter 5. James chapter 5. Verse 7. It 
says, Therefore be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and latter rain? You also be patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. The NIV says in verse 8, You too be patient and stand firm. Because the Lord's coming is near. And that's the, I guess that's the point of this part of the message is standing firm. Standing in the gap spiritually. Please, please, we cannot forget. For the elect's sake, Matthew 24. For the elect's sake, time will be cut short. For the elect's sake, time will be cut short. I'm not, that's not being said out of pride. That's not being said out of hubris. God's word says that. For the elect's sake, time will be cut short. The promise is that no flesh would be saved, but because of the elect. Second Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. It says in the NIV, verse 20, For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. Now it is God who makes both us and you stand firm in Christ. He anointed us, set a seal of ownership upon us, and put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit guaranteeing what is to come. Through Christ, through our Savior? The answer is yes. And He has allowed us to stand firm in Christ. We are His. He wants us to succeed. Through His eyes, He wants to see His children succeed in a world that is corrupt, in a world that is chaotic. So we have to focus ourselves, like I said earlier, Father, help us see what we need to see through your eyes. If things come our way that we need to make a choice on, is it of God? Does it, is it backed by Scripture? Is it backed by the Word of God? Or is it of the world? Or is it Satan trying to tempt us into going a direction we shouldn't be going? We each have those things in the past, in our past. We each have, we have a journey. We all had a, we have a journey. From our birth until our death. Or unless we're still, we're blessed to be here when he arrives the second time. We have a journey on this planet. We can look back at our past and see our own past to see, oh, was God trying to tell us me something there? What did I learn from that if I made that mistake? And if I committed that sin, did I learn something from it? Was God there? Is God there? The answer is yes. God is there through Jesus Christ. We are His. We have made the choice. When we made the choice to understand what baptism was, to accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, to be baptized, and receive the Holy Spirit, we made a choice. We are His. 
And he has put a deposit inside of us so we can use it, we can grow in it, and get the, whole, the rest of it when our Savior comes back. Let's go to Matthew 25 to wrap up. We've talked about a lot of things today through God's eyes. Does God see trust? Does he see obedience? Does he see standing tall? We also talked about do we pray and ask God for help to have us see things through his eyes? Not like the world sees, but as God sees. Matthew 25, verse 23. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Good and faithful servant. We strive to be that. We strive to do that. To be that good and faithful servant. To read the words, to understand, to trust in God, to come before Him when we need help. Because He says, Come to me, I will help you. He says that throughout His scriptures. I will help you stand firm. We cannot be distracted by the world and what is happening. It's happening. We know it's happening, and it's going to get worse. We know that scripture says that. Whether we have 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, that's up to God to decide. That's His choosing. But by doing these things and by standing firm and tall, we will be ready. I was asked a few months ago, what does it mean to be ready? You have to be ready spiritually. There is no way that you can stack canned goods in your basement for seven years or three and a half years. There's no, you can't do it. It's impossible. We have to be spiritually ready for that time. To be strong. We can see in Scripture the nation of Israel. It didn't take much for people to turn their back on God. It didn't take much. We are striving to be that good and faithful servant. We can't get caught up in what the world says is right or wrong. We have to train ourselves to see what is happening through the eyes of God. Is it right or wrong in His eyes? Is it of God's truth or is it, or is it against His truth? As I said at the beginning, that's where the line is drawn in the sand. That is where the line is drawn. Through His eyes we see the path to salvation. The plan that has been put in motion from the beginning and the keys that will allow us to make it to the kingdom. Praise the Father. Praise His Son and our Savior for that wonderful promise of salvation and the promise that they are there to help us stand firm and see things through their eyes.